Good evening everyone. Thank you Leaf Foundation and Ficus Landscape for organizing the third series of Saturday Sajans. I am honored to be a part of it. The topic of my talk is Aikyam which means harmony in Sanskrit. I will thereby be presenting on harmonious planting expressions. March marks the commencement of the spring season and majority of the trees will be in bloom. These colorful tree photographs have been taken from the Lalba Botanical Garden. Plants and mankind have had close association since ancient times. Let us have a brief look at the journey of planting design in the context of India. Four major factors have been responsible for India's rich endowment of natural plant resources. This includes cultural diversity, culinary diversity, curative diversity and ecological diversity. Gardens have been associated with homes since ancient times. Mauli Nong, famed as Asia's cleanest village, is dotted with picturesque hamlets, homestead gardens, traditional food systems, and tranquil, clean surroundings. These are images from my native tropical village in the state of Kerala. The entire livelihood of the region, the culture, food habits, and economy revolves around nature. This system prospers with the central belief that nature is alive, growing and organic and we are one of the elements of its intricately balanced web. The third image is of a rainwater harvesting channel whereas the fourth image is of a frog which is beautifully camouflaged next to it. A combination of cultural and natural evolutionary processes have been responsible for the region's rich and diverse landscape. As seen in the first image, the central market junction gets its name from the giant rain tree. Under the shade of the tree, everyday life happens. And every home has a living utilitarian kitchen garden or homestead garden. These are, these are traditional garden systems where the adjoining land is used for the cultivation of trees, vegetables, fruits, flowers for worship, along with livestock, poultry, fish, all as per the family's basic needs. This makes the houses self-sufficient and nurtures a unique biodiversity within itself. Apart from a rich plant ecology, there's a cultural layer too. The adjacent land along with cultivation of trees for timber, fruits, flowers is also used for cultivating rare varieties of rice, which is the staple food crop of the state. Most of the time is spent outdoors under the shade of a tree or banks of a stream. The build is limited and life revolves around nature. There is so much of fun in plucking and relishing fruits and vegetables from the garden. These are gardens where the edible plants coexist with its natural neighbors and once their life cycle is complete, they decay and become part of nature. A food chain exists in this garden and there's so much of biodiversity in square foot of land. These gardens are very inspiring examples of the close association of land, flora, fauna, culture, livelihood and climate. Sacred groves play an important role in conservation and are rich abodes of rare medicinal plants and herbs. The harvest festival marks the end of the monsoon period and celebrates the gratifying crop harvest received that year. As part of my landscape thesis study, the traditional dishes prepared by the household and its ingredients were studied. The research showed that almost all the vegetables, the spices and the cereals were cultivated by the family within their homestead garden itself, thereby making them very self-sufficient. In the Vedic period, nature was considered divine and pantheism was practiced in which divinity was seen in all life forms and thus respected and revered. In the epic of Ramayana, Valmiki the poet narrates about plant geographies and gives detailed information on edible, non-edible plants, medicinal sacred plants, forest typologies and ecosystems. Trees were called Vanaspati or Lord of the Jungle. Every temple had a specific tree or sthala vriksha, which was uh, worshipped and was selected based on the socio-economic cultural factor of the region. Sacred groves, as seen in the third image, are our oldest ecological traditions and play an important role in the preservation and conservation of the regional biodiversity. 
Gautam Buddha held his discourses in tree groves and pointed at the roots of the trees as the source of knowledge. During the period of 14th to 16th century, there was a change in the planting garden style of India. The Mughal gardens with the anthropocentric designs signified order and were seen as a place for rest and reflection. The other princely courts also started adopting the formalized style of gardening. The third image is of the floating carpet garden on, an, on a lake as part of the beautiful amber fort complex. Mughal Emperor Jahangir made, the, made flower paintings popular and these were more of a decorative form of documentation. The earliest known painting is by the artist Mansur of a tulip flower during their visit to Kashmir. Thereby, paintings and pashmina shawl borders started having floral decorative borders. Marble inlays with iris, lilies, tulips, etc. can be seen in the Taj Mahal and as part of many Mughal architecture buildings. The fourth painting is of the miniature style of painting as part of the Rajasthan courts and they depicted court scenes or hunting scenes with the region's landscape as the background. Colonial gardens gave a glamorous gentility to the traditional gardens. There's an English saying, the ideal garden is the mixture of natural and man-made. The illustration is of the spring broom in Kaban Park and the photographs are, are of trees uh, from Lalbagh Botanical Garden. Inspired from the wise regal examples of India, the traders and the colonial plantation workers uh, started uh, building bungalows with elaborate gardens. The houses had a controlled landscape with neat lawn, quaint flower beds and verandas with potted plants. The gardens were a method to conjure up their nostalgic memories from their homeland and also to symbolically repel the writer's tropical jungle. The hottest Indicus malabaricus is the earliest documentation of the plants of the Malabar coast and was developed by Hendrik, the Dutch governor. The earliest naturalistic style of paintings were developed by the botanists of East India Company and were created by the artists or trained on a Mughal and Rajasthani style of painting. The documentation earlier um, focused on economic and medicinal plants and later it shifted uh, also uh, to religious plants. Landscape architecture as a profession was introduced into the country during the 1900s. Starting from Prabhakar Bhagwat sir, the consecutive firms were headed by Ravindra Bhan sir, Mohammad Shahi sir, Chengapal sir and Nina ma'am from Oikos and so on. These firms educated the country with varied styles of planting design and one of them being the ecological painting or the model style of planting. This was a departure from the rigid uh, style of gardening of the past and it was, uh, it had minimalism as its main concept. Or the third being the naturalistic style of painting. This uh, planting technique uh, was developed in tandem with the region surrounding and uh, had a very natural rustic feel to it. In an informal essay, A.K. Ramunujam begins with the four possible interpretations of the central question, is there an Indian way of thinking? There exists diverse geographical variation in the region of India, the uplands, the valleys, the forests, the islands, the deserts. And each geography is very distinct because of its natural setting and also the way how people have interacted to it. Thereby, we can say that nature is not uniform, nor can design be generalized. Uh, the travel has always been my best teacher. And these are three illustrations from three different rock out terrain contexts. The first is of uh, the sedimentary rock cliff in the region of Varkala. The second is of the temple complex at Lepakshi on a granite outcrop. And the third is the canyon river in Gandikota. As we can see, the three uh, situations look very different and the design is something which is ecologically founded, uh, culturally informed and sustainably anticipated. And it was in the year 2020 
that I finally got the name for my practice. Our garden entry had won for the International Garden Festival at Chaumont sur Loire in France and the theme of that year's competition was Garden of Mother Earth. I named my practice Dharitri and later decided to carry it forward for the name for my practice. Dharitri is a Sanskrit word and is the synonym for Dharti or Earth. Thereby, the practice draws inspiration from the spiritual, spatial, ecological and emotional experiences of nature and has a layer of culture too. There's a famous saying by Basil Charles, I do not want to go back to nature. I came from nature. So let us uh, have a look at the process of plant selection for a planting design. We can start with the humble hibiscus rosa sinensis flower that is the native bush variety of hibiscus. The flower uh, is used for worship, for uh, medication, for herbal teas and for cooking. Thus we can say that the flower has many cultural usages. Now the same flower on a stem with birds looks even more beautiful. It can be used for decoration in an urn or a flower pot or uh, can just simply be admired for its beautiful yet simplistic configuration or the red and green contrasting colors. The eight feet plant bush variety uh, is uh, great for privacy as a buffer and also adds an exotic lushness to the uh, tropical garden. And if the same plant is grouped with other plants like lemongrass, pandanus, heliconias, etc., the whole setting feels very harmonious and complete. The birds, bees, butterflies add that extra theatrical feel to the space. Thus, we can say that by the right selection of plant, we can create a garden which is artfully uh, naturalistic, but at the same time has a cultural functional layer too. With the right selection of planting, different emotions in a garden can be created like mystery, revelation, joy, calm, calmness and tranquility. Thereby, there are three major factors which govern a planting design development, contextual inspiration, nourish human spirit and celebrate the cultural layer and support biodiversity. We will start with the first point that is inspiration from the context. By understanding and studying the local site context, a plant-rich garden can be created which is in tandem with its surroundings and celebrates the regional biodiversity. In an ongoing seaside project, uh, which is a resort in the island of Havelock Island, uh, the natural planting style of the region was studied. As we can see in the section and the photographs, the evergreen forest gradually transitions to tropical plants near streams and ponds and this gradually changes to mangrove plants, palm plantations and beach grasses as a natural adaptation to the wind velocity, the salt content, the soil typology and the water of the region. This planting journey was continued in the three acre linear resort site. The users entering from the roadside will experience a gradual native planting transition as they move towards the uh, beach of the pro property and thereby they celebrate a cumulative partnership with nature. A residential project situated in a massive coffee plantation in the region of Chikmanglu served as a very interesting context to design upon. The beautiful white flowers of coffee last for only three to four days every year and the entire region gets filled with its aroma. And within the next six to seven months, the coffee um, flower carpal gradually changes to a coffee cherry with the coffee bean within it. Thereby, the planting design and the landscape design celebrates this context and a winding uh, driveway was introduced through this coffee plantation. The entrance uh, gate, which is floating in a water body, gradually opens up to this journey ahead. The driveway lined with cobblestone and grass uh, winds slowly through this coffee plantation and makes the users appreciate the coffee and the pepper plantation of the region. And at the same time, it arouses a sense of curiosity. The building and the garden finally reveals itself as we see in the fourth image. For a recently completed Vistro Bar project in Bangalore, 
The six existing trees at the site were retained and the columns which support the roof structure was developed uh, mimicking these tree trunks. Thereby, a dining in nature experience was created with um, seating surrounded with lush tropical planting and the sound of water created using water bodies and um, customized roof lights were made which give a dining uh, under the stars experience. The second factor for developing a planting design is to nourish human spirit and celebrate the cultural context. It has been proven that the mere view of plants can create very calming energies, thereby using the right blend of different plant varieties, uh, a garden can be created which looks effortless but at the same time is intricate and has an overall sense of unity and clarity. In a riverside resort project located in the hilly terrains of the Western Ghats, the planting design drew inspiration from the local context of the river, the arachnid plantations, the levels, as well as creating a calming and relaxed environment for the users. The serene green trails uh, with their specific detailing create different moods as transitioning from one space to another. The tropical plants have spectacular foliage which somewhere compensates for their lack of very significant flowers. The sloping terrain has been planted with wide range of grass varieties which help in soil binding at the same time seamlessly uh, blending the architecture and painting a bigger picture. The water coats with their rustic sculptures uh, create a sense of timeless feel and uh, celebrate the point of beauty in imperfection. A wide range of water bodies have been built at site with their supporting planting uh, to create different pleasant sounds of water and at the same time create patterns in reflection by reflecting the surrounding buildings, the planting, the sunlight or the sun rays as well as the moonlit skies. The third factor while developing a planting design is to support the biodiversity. There is always a conscious effort to reduce the lawn area or to avoid well-shaped hedges, thereby reducing the need for mowing or trimming and uh, the more usage of water. Instead, resilient plants are preferred which can withstand the changes in the climate and as well as native plants which reflect the regional diversity of the region. These are the develop st stages for developing a planting design. First, the landscape design and master plan is developed and the civil work uh, starts at site. After this, a planting sketch is developed. A diverse series of plants are selected based on the environment, the design criteria, the functionality of the space, the growth habits and the shape of the plant. This planting sketch is now later converted into an accurate AutoCAD plan with bill of quantities for the necessary procurement of the plants. So as we can see in the images, the civil work has started at site and the planting has uh, commenced. And within a span of one year and after a good monsoon shower, the plants have grown fully well and these are the same frames and now it's become a lush uh, semi a natural garden. The garden now is frequented with a wide range of bees, butterflies, insects, birds and celebrates the seasonal variations of the region. A combination of fruit, flowering, medicinal, trees, shrubs and ground covers were used and this thereby create an interconnected series of habitats for the biodiversity. And for every garden to look like an ordered jungle, basic maintenance is important. With distinct hot, dry summers and wet monsoons in the tropical regions of India, plants have a tendency to go, grow vigorously. Thereby, based on the location and environment of the site, long-lived robust perennials are preferred over short-lived annuals. During the initial years of the plant growth, the assigned planting contractor has the task of regular watering, application of manure, weed removal and cutting of the dry plants. Once the plants have slowly established themselves, creative maintenance comes into picture, 
which includes draping of a delicate vine on a feature wall or application of an orchid on a tree or addition of new plants based on the overall site painting. And once the plants have grown well, the maintenance includes trimming of fast growing plants, cutting of the uh, debris and adding as mulch to the soil and selective removal of weeds. As we had seen in the wilderness homestead garden slides, um, there's always a preference for the concept of beauty in imperfection and thereby the weeds are allowed to blend in and plants are allowed to age and grow with time. Thereby, once the ecosystem uh, establishes itself, very little maintenance is implemented and the garden is thus allowed to grow to its glory. Thereby, as a conclusion, nature has always been my biggest inspiration and I love to create gardens which harmoniously blend in with no apparent start or end. Thank you.